session this afternoon. So our first speaker, Heidi Hutchison, she's going to introduce herself and um, provide you with a, a rather interesting paper. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me for my presentation. Before I begin, I'd just like to give a warning that this presentation will include some discussion about suicide, including a video that makes reference to suicide, which I understand can be a sensitive and upsetting topic for some people. Therefore, people are welcome to leave now or any time during the presentation. My name is Heidi Hutchison, and I'm a recent occupational therapy graduate from University of South Australia. Today, I will be discussing my honours project, which explored the barriers and enablers for promoting mental health and wellbeing through South Australian football clubs. Dear Mum and Dad, this isn't your fault. Well, I've been doing it really tough for a good while now. I'm sorry I can't be the father you want me to be. Go find another best friend. It was no one's fault. No one caused it. Please move on. That's all I want. I love you. And I'm done. I wrote this six years ago. I wrote this three years ago. I wrote this four years ago. That was 15 years ago. people made the choice to talk is not always the case. Unfortunately, the rates of death by suicide continue to rise. In Australia, 3,128 individuals died from intentional self-harm in 2017, increasing 9.1% from 2016. Suicide was the leading cause of death for those aged 15 to 44 years of age. Rates of suicide are substantially higher in rural areas and are reported to be approximately 40% higher than in major cities. And for young men aged 15 to 29 years, this rate is almost twice as high. One of the strongest predictors of suicide is mental illness, thereby drawing attention to the prevalence of mental health issues in a rural setting. Help-seeking behaviour is considerably lower in rural Australia, with only 241 out of every 1,000 people having a GP mental health related encounter, in contrast to 668 for every 1,000 in major cities. However, rural males are more likely to participate in organised sport than their urban counterparts, suggesting that sport is a central part of the lives of rural Australians. Australian rules football is particularly popular in SA and in many other states across Australia. Research has suggested football clubs have been found to be a source of social capital in rural communities as they help to build a sense of community and belonging. In rural settings, football clubs have been found to foster social interaction, a sense of community and offer a range of physical and mental health benefits. Research suggests football clubs could be considered the hub of a community and can shape a town's identity. Since football clubs appear to be an important part of the social fabric of communities, exploration of football clubs as a means of delivering mental wellbeing programs is warranted. While there have been mental health programs run through football clubs, few have been evaluated, with exceptions including Coach the Coach and Read the Play, which involve training coaches in mental health first aid and club representatives to becoming player wellbeing officers. Both found football clubs may be appropriate for promoting mental health and, in and increasing mental health literacy, but emphasised the need for further research. No studies have been undertaken to explore the barriers and enablers for delivering mental health and wellbeing programs through rural football clubs, 
and it's needed to design programs which are engaging and effective in re reducing the rates of suicide and improving help-seeking behaviours of rural Australian males. This brings me to my study, which aimed to explore the barriers and enablers for promoting mental health and wellbeing through rural South Australian football clubs. A qualitative descriptive design was selected as it is the best methodology when straight descriptions of phenomena are desired. The design was chosen to gather rich descriptive data from the participants on their perceptions of the barriers and enablers for programs targeting mental health and wellbeing in football clubs. To be included in the study, participants had to meet the inc inclusion and exclusion criteria, which included being from a male rural football club, a senior club member, which could include being a coach, captain or committee member, and have a good understanding of the mental health and wellbeing issues affecting the club. Football clubs who are part of the SANFL were contacted via email, phone or Facebook. Twelve participants from ten football clubs volunteered to participate. Interviews were, with participants were conducted over the phone using semi-structured interview guide and tra transcribed verbatim. From here, the interviews were analysed thematically using Braun and Clark's framework to guide the process. It was completed predominantly by myself and checked and discussed with the research team. This analysis was done by using notes in the margins of the transcripts and mind mapping the codes from each interview using post-it notes. And this was all combined to produce three main themes. To ensure rigour, member checking was completed to check that participants' views had been interpreted correctly. So my results, the context firstly. The 12 participants had a wide range of roles in their football clubs and varied in age as shown in the table here. Roles included presidents, players, captains and other committee member roles. And some participants had more than one role at their club, e.g. were president and also playing football. Participants were from towns across the state, which is demonstrated by the red dots on this map. It is worth noting that one club included in this study is located across the border in Victoria. However, it was included as it is part of the SA NFL by playing against SA clubs in their league. Participants also gave similar descriptions of their communities, including lack of things to do and lack of job opportunities for young people, and talked about sport being something young people enjoyed. From the interviews, three main themes emerged. One, more than a football club. Two, attitudes towards mental health. And three, what football clubs need to implement a program, with sub-themes of resources, importance of timing, financial support and sponsorship, mental health initiatives that have been implemented by clubs and components of a program. Theme one, more than a football club. Um, as I go through each of the themes, I'll also do some quotes from the participants on the screen. Um, participants reported their football club as being tight-knit and a place where people support and look out for each other. The football club was described as a hub, including being the social hub of the community, as it serves as a social gathering place and a place where people meet. Many spoke about the club being used by the community for other purposes, including weddings and birthdays. A lot of positive aspects of the football club were described by participants, however one commented that it can be a little clicky. Theme two, attitudes towards mental health. Talking about mental health within their clubs had varied responses. Five mentioned that people in their club are uncomfortable talking about mental health, with reasons including it being a taboo subject, the stigma and lack of confidentiality, or understanding of mental health. Six participants mentioned improvements in people's openness in talking about mental health, and some thought a small number of people in their club were open to conversations. Majority spoke of suicides that affected their football communities, and many commented that local suicides had prompted people in the club to talk. And this is probably one quote that definitely stood out to me over through all the interviews. I've known five footballers who I've coached or coached against coached against or played with who have committed suicide and none of them did it in a football season. Participants suggested there would be varied attitudes at their clubs to a program. A few thought it would be very well received. Some thought the response of their football players would be varied or were a bit unsure. 
and one thought footballers would laugh at it. A few participants thought that it would be more difficult getting older people in the club involved in a program, suggesting they are more likely to have a you're weak if you talk mentality. Theme three, what football clubs need to implement a program. So resources. Participants described resources they'd require to implement a program, including the need for a designated person to run the program, with many thinking the person running it or guest speakers should be from the football community, such as previous AFL or state players, as they would be a bit more relatable. Other important resources identified included a clear program structure, advertising and promotion material, and incentives to people to attend, like food. Importance of timing. Timing of a program was an aspect that 11 of the 12 participants mentioned in relation to attendance. Most thought early in the season or pre-season would be appropriate and after training would be best. The frequency of a program raised varied opinions. Some thought a program should be once a year, others thought more frequent. Many highlighted the importance of club having choice in the timing. Financial support and sponsorship. Um, financial and sponsorship incentives was another common aspect raised. Many highlighted that their clubs do not have a lot of money, with the majority indicating that they are more likely to implement a program if there was no cost. Others suggested they would need funding or sponsorship, e.g. supported by the state governing body for football, or be part of the good sports accreditation. Mental health initiatives that have been implemented by clubs. The Beyond Blue Day was one initiative being run at a club, which began after a captain died by suicide. Two participants spoke about sessions their club had following a tragedy. One spoke about a suicide prevention workshop that their club sponsored for the local community, however had low attendance. One football club ran an Are You OK Day and one spoke of a men's night. Some discussed mental health related roles, including a mental health advocate position and some members trained in mental health first aid. Many described the club environment as an informal mental health support with members always looking out for each other. Components of a program were things that would engage their football clubs, including su many suggesting real life scenarios to resonate with those attending and the program to include information on confidential mental health supports in their community. Furthermore, many suggested a follow up to the program or reminders of the program's key messages through take home resources like pamphlets or barrows. Participants varied in their opinions as to who should attend, with some suggesting inviting the wider community or the netball community, and others suggesting inviting surrounding towns. One indicated that their members would be more comfortable if the program only involved their own club. So from these themes, enablers and barriers were identified to running a program, um, but there definitely wasn't any necessarily any consensus across responses. A common enabler was the social environment, environment that the football club offered to members. On the contrary, negative attitudes towards mental health, reported stigma, and issues around confidentiality were potential barriers. Some participants identified that recent incidences of mental health issues, e.g. suicide, had prompted people to be more open to discussion about this topic, therefore act as an enabler. Reduced finances and lack of volunteers to run a program were identified as barriers. Participants indicated that these could be overcome through sponsorship or support from other organisations, including the provision of someone to facilitate the program. Involving someone who has standing in the football community was seen to be important. Finally, consideration of the appropriate timing, reinforcement of mental health messages, and rallying support of senior club members to promote the program were also identified as considerations for enabling success. So what do these findings mean? These findings provide valuable information to inform the development and design of a mental wellbeing program delivered through football clubs. Such as one, they highlight the importance of involving the club in decisions regarding the program, content, target groups and scheduling, as rural communities are not all the same. Two, readiness to receive mental health information is an important consideration. Clubs already running initiatives may be ready for deeper conversations. In contrast, clubs who have, had not, who have not had exposure to previous programs may need to start with awareness raising around mental health issues. 
Three, building trust with the community, particularly with leaders of the club, was important so that they are supporting and promoting the program prior to commencement. Four, the stigma associated with mental health and less assurance of confidentiality are issues rural communities face towards help seeking. Therefore, it's vital the program addresses these concerns. Five, real life examples were identified as assisting with engagement. This could be incorporated by the inclusion of guest speakers with lived experiences of mental health issues, particularly someone with standing in the football community. Six, support for the program could include financial assistance or support of the key messages being delivered. A key stakeholder to get on board would be the governing body of the football club at a local or state level. Seven, assisting clubs to access local grants and source funding through sponsorship from local businesses and organisations will be important. Ongoing sustainability of funding should be considered during the development stage. Eight, finally programs should be evidence-based and include piloting and evaluation to ensure they achieve the best outcomes for rural communities. Um, some limitations in my study, so it's acknowledged that the participants' views may not be represented, representative of the whole community and that clubs who volunteered to participate in the study may be more open to discussing mental health, and we may not have captured clubs where this topic is perceived to be more taboo. So in conclusion, participants in this study indicated that a mental health and wellbeing program delivered through their football club would be beneficial. The University of South Australia has recently conducted um, some projects with a football club in Whaler. They're by combining these findings with this study and some more research will continue to build on the development and delivery of a mental wellbeing program through rural football clubs. Um, with another project being undertaken this year, which you'll get to hear more about in the next presentation. Thanks for listening.